Now we're going to take some time to take a look at the different types of ethical hacking and almost the different approaches that you might take at a high level when attacking systems in an ethical manner. So the first thing we're going to define is white box testing. And white box testing basically defines that you have full disclosed knowledge of the network that you're attacking. In other words, the person that you're working with or working for has said there's a SQL server running at this IP address. Take a look at that SQL server. Here's the version information. Here are the applications that rely on it. Here's a current patch level. Find out if there are any vulnerabilities on that server. And that's definitely some great information to know because it allows you to save time in trying to fingerprint that system and do research on it and just go straight into the assessment of the box as far as exploits, vulnerabilities, and those type things are concerned. The problem with white box testing is it's not always going to be realistic from a true hacker's perspective. Because we know that level of information, then we're going to be able to say, okay, well, we know we can go straight in and perform this exploit. And again, if you're looking to get short to the point reports and understand what the vulnerabilities are, it's a great way to go about that. A lot of companies, however, are going to want you to do black box testing. And basically, you have zero knowledge about how that company's network is set up. You don't know what operating systems they're running. You don't know what IP ranges they're using, where their DMZ is at, what directory systems, any of those things. You have no idea. And that's actually also a great way to approach it because it allows you to footprint and fingerprint the organization and try to gain information. Again, just that part of it alone is a huge part of the hacking methodology gaining as much public information about the company as you can and then moving in and trying to get as much information as possible. So there are definitely benefits and drawbacks associated with both white box and black box testing. Now in addition to these two clean cut definitions you also have a little bit more gray area hence the name gray box testing which is not a clearly defined method or type of ethical hacking but it basically means that you have some level of knowledge of the network going into it but you don't have the explicit detail involved in true white box testing. Again, either way you go here, it's a great way because you're still performing these assessments against your network and gaining the knowledge therein. This is usually going to be defined by the organization or the group that you're working with and performing these vulnerability assessments. Speaking of vulnerability assessments, we can actually break down the additional type of assessment that we're doing by defining vulnerability assessments and penetration testing. So you can actually perform white or black box penetration testing, or you can perform white or black box vulnerability assessment. So after you've defined the level of knowledge you're going to have, the next thing to define is how deep are you going to attempt to go as far as assessment and testing against this network. And vulnerability assessment is actually kind of a lighter way to go about that process. Generally, you're going to use automated tools and scanners, things like Nessus and MBSA from Microsoft to go in and find out where those weaknesses are. Now, this is okay because it allows you to usually check for patch level, which is very important. Are they fully patched? Are they configured properly? Are there any known vulnerabilities that exist in that network? Now, the problem that arises with vulnerability assessment is that it's never going to be as in-depth as penetration testing. Because you're relying on these automated tools to do your work for you, you are only going to get as good information as your tool has. In other words, if there's a live exploit working today on the Internet that no one knows about, then if you don't know about it, how is it going to be configured in your tool? The benefit of doing vulnerability assessment with these automated tools is that it generally requires a lot less workload and fewer people doing the job. So, again, there's kind of a benefit there of it's a quick scan, it happens automatically, I don't have to put a lot of effort into it, and I can get a pretty decent preliminary report back to tell me, you know, the basic security information involved in my network. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum there is true penetration testing. And this is where you go very, very far beyond vulnerability assessment. Vulnerability assessment is actually a very small piece of penetration testing. We're going to identify those vulnerabilities just like we would in vulnerability assessment. But we're going to take it a step further and look for vulnerabilities that aren't configured in our tools. We're going to even create vulnerabilities if necessary. There have been a lot of environments that I've been in the past where they're running custom compiled operating systems and applications that were in-house developed. Unfortunately, vulnerability assessment doesn't take you very far because 
if the person or the company making the tool has never heard of your target, obviously they're not going to be prepared for it. So being able to compile your own tools on the fly and have an in-depth understanding to the level required to perform penetration testing, you're definitely going to get a lot better results on custom networks. So penetration testing is going to go far beyond that and actually perform the exploits or mock perform those exploits and write up information based on that.